I've had this system up and running for a couple of months now, and I think I'm ready to share with you what I think about this system in this review. Having bought all of these cameras I'm going to be talking about in this video, I'm going to say I had to wait quite a while to get each of them in, and I had to play the waiting game with most of my purchases. Good thing they have a built-in stock notification system for their out-of-stock items, making it pretty easy to purchase them when they are in stock. There's just a bunch of weirdness going on with inventory right now with electronics and the chip shortages currently. Uh, so just be prepared to wait for the equipment like I had to. You might be seeing this video in the future and uh, could be wondering what chip shortage that I'm talking about and what inventory issues that I'm talking about. So just keep that in mind. I want to dive into the pros and cons of the Unify Protect system as a whole. I'm going to be focused on home usage. I'll walk you through what I have placed around my home and I'll also talk about some of the cost considerations you should be aware of. I want to place heavy emphasis on home use. You could probably get away with using this system in a small business setup or you know setting as well as long as you don't need more than 50 cameras you should be fine with deploying this in that type of setting i'm going to start with the cons right out of the gate and for most people it's cost Equipment cost with the Unify system is pretty high. The G4 Pro is a whopping $450 just for a single camera. The G4 Bullet and the G4 Doorbell are $200 a piece. Uh, luckily, the G3 Flex is only about $80. With all of that said and everything considered, the cost adds up really quick because you also need the UDM Pro, which is another $380 and possibly the network video recorder, the NVR, which starts at $300 and a powerful enough switch that will probably set you back at least $300. We'll talk more about switch selection later because I hit a snag with the USW16 PoE. We just scratched the service and you can see cost gets pretty heavy pretty quickly. Uh, then you have to account for installation if you're not capable of doing it yourself. I hope to show you how I installed my system myself to save you a pretty good amount of money because installation costs could cost you a pretty good amount of money as well. So uh, hopefully what I show you in this video will give you some ideas on how you can execute installation for yourself um, on your own. If you're planning on using this system beyond, you know, a max 20 cameras and that's being generous, if you're trying to run 20 G4 Pros at full 4K resolution, you're probably only gonna get around 10 cameras. The UDM Pro isn't uh, as robust enough to handle the additional workload outside of network and internet management for your home. So you are going to need a dedicated NVR at some point. You'll also need a pretty substantial switch that has the ability to deliver the required wattage through power over ethernet as uh, power draw to the cameras becomes quite demanding pretty quickly, especially in low light to night settings with the use of the G4 IR range extender. Wattage doubles in the usage of the G4 Bullet. The system I am showcasing for you in this video will run you around $1,900 plus tax. The one caveat is you'll need to add about $700 to that if you want to run more than five cameras as well as internet service under uh, one network management system. That's because you'll definitely want to add uh, the Unify NVR and a beefier switch like the USW Pro 24 PoE. Uh, so in my opinion, uh, pricing is definitely a con initially. Another con is vendor lock. As soon as you buy into Unify and their equipment, you're locked in with them unless you completely switch manufacturers and go uh, with a completely different systems and equipment. That's kind of a bummer for me, as I would have loved to have had the ability to use, you know, something like surveillance station on my Synology uh, network attack storage to record redundant footage to, uh, rather than the UDM Pro's built-in NVR. I literally have no redundancy with my footage as it stands today. Even with an NVR, I have no way of sharing copies out of my recordings to another system with the way Ubiquiti has set up Unify Protect. I can't dump footage quickly and efficiently anywhere beyond what is on uh, Unified Protect's dashboard. I'm just comparing Unified Protect to Synology Surveillance Station because that builds accessible files uh, to my NAS that I can cut copy, download, and dump if I need to quickly and easily. Unify Protect, 
not so much. With pricing being a con, it also feeds into my list of pros. Mainly, the system has freed me from subscription costs uh, like that of Nest, Ring, Simply Safe, and ADT. That's just to name a few. Those can range from $10 a month upwards to $70 a month for a full blown video monitoring package with ADT, for example, as I had it quoted out from me when I was debating on what I was going to do with my home monitoring, it will run you around $840 a year of recurring costs. And you know, that will go up because uh, companies usually raise subscription costs over time. You'll also need to pay ADT to install the system and that will cost you an additional one-time fee of around $900 to $1,200, depending on what you're uh, doing and what system you want installed on your home. To be fair, uh, with ADT, you also get access control, burglary prevention, and fire alerts that uh, tie directly into your local emergency services. This is something you won't get with Unify Protect. With that said, I found Unify Protect to be the best choice for me in monitoring my home with camera feeds outside of it. Moving my pros list along, licensing. Using a similarly constructed system like this on Synology surveillance station opened up a whole can of worms for me as I started to review what the true cost was. And this is where I learned that I must also purchase licensing beyond two cameras on that system. When I began to explore the low cost Amcrest PoE cameras that are available, I learned that I would also need to purchase licenses for each of those cameras as I began to grow my system beyond the initial two free licenses that you get with Surveillance Station. With Unify Protect, licensing is built into the purchase price of your Protect equipment. Licensing costs can range from 50 to $90 per camera, and sometimes they need to be renewed which quickly adds up and made it an easy decision for me to go with Unify. And if you need to renew licensing on your own PoE cameras, that just wraps you it back up into reoccurring, never ending uh, cost increases. So what difference would it make if I had my own cameras and did a renewed license versus going with something like Nest? Ultimately, it becomes what you determine as what you want from your system and how much you want to spend. There are a ton of fantastically affordable PoE cameras out there that cost way less than what Unify offers. But one thing that I would like for you to consider, uh, I would argue the image quality on say the G4 Bullet and the G4 Pro produce some of the best video that I've seen from a surveillance system. The sensors that Unify is using in some of their uh, cameras are far superior to uh, more affordable PoE options out there. And if you can't clearly see what is happening in areas that you're trying to monitor with video feeds, then there's no point in having the system at all. I've uh, come in contact with lots of security camera footage that you can barely tell what is going on in the scene because the bit rate's so low or the sensor is just terrible, it hasn't been cleaned or uh, the camera isn't capable of capturing good detailed footage to give you what it is you need for description purposes. Uh, you've all seen it on the news as well. My final pro to this setup is data cap avoidance. I know some of you out there are under the iron grip of Comcast and are forced customers of their services. Here in Utah, Comcast has data caps on its customers. With Unify Protect, you're no longer sending video feeds to the cloud, eating up your data cap with largely nothing important. The occasional peek in the areas that you're monitoring, all, all you need to have to worry about, you won't have to pay Comcast any additional money, and that's a good thing. All of your footage lives locally on your own network, therefore protecting you from incurring additional ISP costs because those lame ass ISPs wanted to limit the amount of data you're using. Lots of folks don't realize how much data gets eaten up with security camera feeds to the cloud after they initially installed something like a Nest Hello or a Ring doorbell and their immediate solution to avoid uh, more cost is lowering the quality of the feed. That sometimes hampers their ability to actually monitor what's going on. And that's just goes back to my last point. If you can't see or use the footage or make out any details of your situation, then why have it at all? That wraps up my pros and cons. If you have any feedback to what I've listed, I'd love to hear from you in the comments. So drop one down there if you agree or you think I missed something. Um, now I wanna take an opportunity to walk you around uh, how I installed my system without needing to hire someone to do it for me. This may apply to you and maybe it will give you some ideas on how you can do it yourself as well if you're considering buying into the Unify Protect system. 
This is the central system of my whole Unify Protect system. Uh, if you want to see a video on how I built this cabinet out, I'll leave a, a video linked in the description. I'll also uh, click on this card and you'll be able to see it somewhere up here. Anyways, I'm running everything through the UDM Pro. So there's a single drive and the USW 16 PoE switch that I've identified as being a little bit too weak for the needs that I've built this system out to. The IR range extender draws a little bit too much power. I need to upgrade my switch at some point. So right now that thing just sits disabled uh, unless I need to view on that camera. All right, let's get right into it. The first thing that you're gonna notice is my basement is unfinished and my attic is extra insulated with R50. So I ran every cable for my Unify Protect system through the basement. Uh, because it's all unfinished and I have easy access to anywhere in my home because it's all unfinished. Uh, back to this little area, uh, the white Cat6 cable it signifies all of my Unify Protect equipment. So all of the blue is my internet so I can visually tell the difference between the cables and I also labeled all those cables so I know which uh, cable goes where. Let's talk about the G4 bullet that's on the side of my home and the G3 flex. First the G4 bullet, I just ran it through. Uh, we're going to follow this cable. Easily done. I just ran it through some holes that were already in existence and then I just came over here and I ran it through the side of my home. It's much easier to go this route than having myself climb up, uh, you know, in, uh, in the attic and then have to pull down soffits and fascia and add backing and then re-add it and then make sure that it's all watertight and sealed. This way I just went through it and have bought some conduit pieces that we'll talk about here momentarily and it all worked out extremely well. Uh, very clean install for that camera. We'll go back to how I installed the G3 Flex. This one goes up and goes around here and then through all the way like existing holes. I had I didn't even need to drill any uh, additional holes except for the one that's right there. This one runs right out to my exterior wall and it's all said and done. That cable is uh, electrical, so you can see the Cat5 or the Cat6 going through and out through the exterior wall. Uh, we'll go and look at uh, how I installed the uh, two cameras that I have facing the front of my home. Uh, again, up and through and through there. And then there's two white cables, and it's, I pulled all this insulation down and then it goes out through this insulation and out into the garage. We'll go take a look at that right now. Okay, so here we are with the G4 Pro and the G4 Bullet that are installed in front of my garage. You see how I just ran these two Cat6 cables out? We'll follow the, the line that I put for uh, the G4 Pro first. Easily done. If you had the same type of situation, you can do the same. It's really easy. Probably the easiest install for me was the garage cameras because I literally just, you know, ran these cables along the inside of my garage. Here's the G4 bullet on the side that we took a look at and this is just going to go diagonally over to the side of where my garage is and there's the termination. It comes down, goes, there's the termination point. You know, just seal it with some silicone, keeps the bugs out. And it's simply easily put, as long as you have a ladder and a nice drill bit that can get through some extended walls and wood, you might have some issues hitting, you know, some metal or stuff, but just be prepared for that. Um, this will save you a ton of money from, uh, not having to have an ins installer come and do the work for you. And it keeps you from messing around in uh, insulation, which is probably the worst thing known to man, especially me. I hated it and I hate insulation in and of itself. It's just so itchy and stuff. So this helped me avoid that and the install looks uh, semi-professional. I mean, I could have totally got up into the attic, crawled across this roof and then dropped it down and you know, added a whole 12 hours of work to it. But this way is uh, makes it easy for 
uh, individuals like myself that are not pro installers but good enough to get it done to where the cables are still secure inside my home nobody can cut into them and all that type of stuff in the interest of showing you the final product and how it looks I mean it looks professionally installed and I got full purview of my home that's the G4 bullet on the side of the house and there is the G4 Pro if I can get this thing to focus as such yep and I mean it looks good to me I mean you could leave a comment down below saying otherwise but for me it looks clean both sides of the garage whole front of my house whole front view of my home is covered and I think it looks extremely clean all right so I went to my local hardware store and this is where the cat six comes out of my basement ceiling and I have this single junction box and then I got this plastic conduit that runs up to a double junction box where I mounted the G4 bullet with the IR range extender up there. That's about uh, 10 feet off the ground from this point. So in total, it's about 12 feet above the ground and it protects the um, uh, Cat 6 that's encapsulated within that uh, plastic conduit. Uh, I mean, you could totally come over here and unscrew that and get in there, but uh, with this install, uh, I did leave a little bit of slack inside there in case I ever needed to replace it or add another junction to the cat 6 cable in case this became damaged the exterior part of it in some way shape or form and that allows me to replace it easily and has enough slack in there to do so um, and then I punched down my termination point there and plugged it into the G4 bullet and it makes the it makes the system look in professionally installed in my opinion and it helped me avoid uh, climbing up there having to take off the gutter take off the fascia take down the soffit add backing crawl in the insulation and just a whole hell of a lot of problems that I avoided just by going this route because I am lucky enough to have an unfinished basement. So if you're in the same you know, boat as I am, that's the tip that I have for you. You can easily buy these kits at uh, you know, your Lowe's or your Home Depot or you, any place that is some sort of electrical uh, conduit provider. They have these 10 foot strips and I mean, you can get them in metal too if you wanted to add extra security. I just went the plastic route for weight purposes. And I mean, this works really well. One thing that I do want to add is some uh, couplers to, you know, secure it to the stucco so the wind and stuff doesn't blow it. Now I'll add that sooner or later. All right, so the final install for the G3 Flex on my back end of the home. Uh, I got a single junction box with the same plastic conduit running up to the top. I had to cut this one a little bit for this camera. As you can see here, there's a little spot there that's covered with uh, silicone because when I was drilling through uh, the footing, uh, there was a metal plate there that's holding the joist together and I hit that and I couldn't get through. So I went up a little bit higher, drilled through there easily, uh, you know, put everything in place like I would need to. I did have to cut this uh, conduit a little bit to fit and this one is going to need some uh, coupling holders uh, for conduit in place because you can see the sun is a, a being not so kind to it and it's warping it. So I'll put that in place another thing that you could avoid this whole thing would be just put a metal at conduit metal conduit here and that wouldn't you wouldn't have that problem at all it would just add a little bit of weight to the whole system and i i don't think it would look too bad i am going to spray paint this one white so it blends in a little bit better and we'll see how it looks at the end of it i won't show that in this video because i haven't got time to get to that and i just wanted to show you guys quickly what i did to install you also need the wall mount for the g3 flex if you're going to do the same type of setup anyways let me know what you think about this whole install job i think it looks good so i guess that's all that really matters but i'd love to hear your feedback in the comment section down below okay i lied so here is the finished product of what i intended to do i painted that conduit white and I also did the junction boxes as well and I secured the uh, conduit to the stucco there with that little clasp uh, in the end I think it looks really really good as a finished product and it blends better into what the home looks like you know the white and everything it's a little bit more difficult to see and it doesn't pop out to you 
So again, let me know what you think. I think it turned out really well and it looks professionally installed as best as possible, especially considering how much it would have cost me to have somebody come and do this. Let's start the sample footage off with the cream of the crop, the G4 Pro. Two things you're gonna to wanna to do with this camera when you initially set it up is disable lens correction. That'll open up the field of view and increase uh, what you see uh, with the, paired with the resolution, you have a lot of stuff you can see within this camera. I can see all the way to the corner of the street and that's 50, 60 feet away. And if you zoom in with the resolution, you can see it. You have detail. Uh, it resolves in there and you know most cameras fall apart there and you lose you know, license plate numbers and stuff like that. This is not the case with this one. Another thing that I said is uh, enabling HDR. That's why you see a little bit of discoloration around the shadows. Um, it's not about color accuracy with uh, security cameras. It's all about capturing the details and you know having all that available to you. This camera is not economical in the sense that you would set up a bunch of them around the home because they're so expensive, especially when you compare them to um, the G4 Bullet. That thing is, is a phenomenal camera for uh, $150 cheaper. I would go that route with surrounding my homes and then just adding one like I did here, you know, in a high traffic area or something like that. Um, the one thing that you will notice when you load these things up on the smartphone app, the the G4 Pro and the G4 Bullet feeds are almost indistinguishable. The, when you will notice is when you download the footage on your desktop using the time lapse feature within the dashboard of the Unit Hyper Tech. The resolution on the G4 Pro is just amazing. And that's why you'll notice that this footage hasn't been really uh, increased in size or you know it hasn't been blown up for purposes of this review. It's just been added to the timeline because I could do that and the resolution is there. It's a phenomenal camera. Here's footage from the G4 Pro in near zero light. My neighbors do have their garage lights on, so uh, as you can see, this camera does a really good job in night settings, especially with the IR blaster that's built into this thing. It's just much more substantial than what you'll get on the G4 Bullet. Also, the resolution is substantially better than any of the cameras that we'll be looking at today, because this is being recorded in 4K. Uh, and, I mean, it does a really good job uh, as far as capturing, you know, details in the dark. If I were to walk up to my vehicle and try to get into it, you could see face, uh, you know, facial uh, characteristics of individuals and stuff like that. So, I mean, the G4 Pro is probably the best camera that you can get. It's actually the best camera that you can get from Unify. Moving right along, here's the G4 Bullet. You can see I got full coverage of my vehicles in my driveway. Uh, there's really not much to say about the G4 Bullet other than when we get to the night section of it, you'll see what I'm talking about. But this being 1080, uh, the resolution's a little bit lacking, but the 1080p sensor on the G4 Bullet is a really good sensor and you can get a lot of detail from it. It's really indistinguishable when you're looking at footage on uh, your smartphone from the G4 Pro, but when you look at the footage on a desktop, you know, when you download footage on the time, uh, time lapse feature within the dashboard of Unify Protect, you can see there's a significant difference. It's just because of the resolution. So here's the G4 Bullet in near dark as well, same driveway. My neighbors over there have their lights on their uh, garage, and the neighbor over here has her light on on her porch. So that's helping uh, the IR sensor with this capture a lot more detail. Uh, the G4 Bullet has a, a, a lot weaker uh, IR uh, capabilities, you know, infrared capabilities, but you can still make out a pretty good amount of uh, detail. So if I were to walk up to this vehicle and try to get into it, uh, you would see and be able to make out those facial characteristics and all that type of stuff. So, I mean, the G4 Bullet is no slouch, but it's just not as good as the Pro. This is 1080, and that's the max that you're going to get resolution-wise on the G4 Bullet. Here's another sample of the G4 Bullet. It's a little bit different setting. It's about 20 feet away and about 12 feet up. And the microphone quality is going to be put to the test here. The good thing about most of these cameras is that the microphone sensitivity can be adjusted within the app. Right now it's at 75% from what I was testing last night. So let's go ahead and bump that up so you can see how much of a difference that makes. I, did, I just realized that I didn't need a whole lot of microphone sensitivity in this area because there's not a whole lot of uh, foot traffic. But within it, you, within the app, you can go in and adjust the microphone quality up to 100%. We'll wait for that to take effect. As I'm speaking, you'll probably notice uh, the sensitivity uh, hones in a little bit more and you're going to hear a lot more of my voice and it's going to be louder. 
I'm going to have to adjust some of this footage in uh, post-production to make it, uh, you know, viewable and hearable on my project because my audio that I recorded in my review is a lot higher. So just uh, take note of that and just be mindful that I did, you know, did a little bit of finagling to make the footage previewable to you. But just know that the 1080p sensor on the G4 Bullet is phenomenal and I think it's probably the go-to camera for most people. Um, outside of the G3 Flex. You want to spend a little bit more, have a little bit more features, um, and be a little bit more uh, keen on your area that you're monitoring, the G4 Bullet is definitely the way that you want to go. Here's some more G4 Bullet sample footage, and this is just with the plain RR sensor on it. Um, to combat this, however, I have added a motion light, so if I go over here, uh, this is going to kick on and that helps with this. So as far as uh, how everything works with the G4 Bullet, you can really get a good idea of how you can still hear with the microphone on this thing because it is, I don't know, 30 feet away from me and about 12 feet up. So, I mean, you're going to get uh, good coverage as far as microphone and video coverage. Uh, as soon as my motion light goes out, I will enable the IR range extender and you'll see how different it is. Okay, so you can see my face being illuminated by my phone. I'm going to enable the external IR accessory on this uh, device and we'll see how much of a difference it is. It does a really good job at illuminating really dark areas and expanding the capability of the G4 Bullet. Uh, it just draws a lot of wattage, so you have to have a substantial switch to drive that uh, IR accessory in darker environments. I mean, you can see back there that that is illuminated, but um, before my neighbors moved in over here, this whole area was pitch black. And adding that IR range extender uh, gave me a lot more coverage. And, you know, to combat that, uh, I put a, a motion light there as well so I can watch all the windows and stuff like that. But let me know what you think of the uh, quality of the G4 Bullet with the IR range extender uh, enabled and disabled um, down in the comments section below. Here's the G4 doorbell. Uh, this is a really good camera. Uh, you gotta remove, you got to remove lens correction so you can get a wider field of view. It's a little distorted and the resolution's a little bit wonky, but I would expect that from a, a doorbell type of camera because of the way that it has to capture a lot of footage or a lot of field of view within a small confined space in some instances for some people at home. I wish that the G4 doorbell had PoE connection because I feel like there's a little bit of a delay when I'm getting notified from the doorbell from my other cameras that are PoE and connected directly into my network. I get notifications quicker on like the G4 Pro. I mean it, it is because of the nature of it but I feel like I get a much quicker response when I'm home from the cameras that are wired into my network. Anyways, uh, this is the G4 doorbell. Let me know what you think of the quality of this camera. It's going to be a little bit weird because my, my video review is going to be in a different resolution than what the cameras are capable of shooting, so I'm going to have to expand these a little bit. You can see that this camera does a really good job at illuminating the scene, especially in a pitch black environment, and that has to do with the ring around the doorbell itself helps illuminate the whole area. So that, in addition to the IR uh, sensor or the IR extender that's built into this camera, helps give you really good coverage and you can pick up a lot of details, especially in a pitch black environment like this. Finally, from the day samples, um, the G3 Flex, you can see that it does a really good job at capturing the audio around here. The microphone on the G3 Flex is, is decent. It does a good job at monitoring this whole area. I got a whole preview of this whole back area of access to my home. You know, I can see pretty much a good part of if somebody were to go down to my walkout or go up to my deck and try to enter my home there. Uh, one thing that you're going to want to note with the D3 Flex is that you're, you're probably going to want to enable HDR and that goes for all of the cameras and that does a little bit of skewing on the color and stuff like that but it highlights all of the dark shadowed areas and brings down the highlights so you can see a lot of detail in your scene. Uh, color accuracy is not important there, it's all about details and having all of those available to you. So here we are closing up the sample set. Uh, this is the night vision footage of the G3 Flex. It struggles a little bit. Uh, I am lucky enough to have some illumination from my neighbor next door to windows and the lights are on so that's helping you know, light up this scene. It would be a little bit worse if those weren't there. Uh, the IR sensors on the G3 Flex are really weak. And, but 
what do you expect for an $80 camera? There's also this haloing effect on the sensor that I'm not quite sure of how to get rid of, and I've just kind of accepted it for what it is. Again, $80 camera. The microphones are great on the G3 Flex. It picks up a lot of sound in this area. So if somebody were to talk or something like this, snap around and you hear that. To combat the limited night vision capabilities of the G3 Flex, I did install another motion mic. So if somebody were over here walking around, uh, that pops on. So it is what it is. Uh, uh, let me know what you think about this footage. Put a comment down below. Now one of the most important parts about this review in my opinion, since we've looked at quality of cameras and how I've installed it, you can get a pretty good idea of what you're getting from the equipment. I'm really impressed with the features Unify continues to give us and make their uh, dashboard better for users like me on their hardware. The first thing that I like to talk about is Smart Detect, which detects people and is currently in beta for recognizing vehicles. After they move vehicles out of beta, I'm hoping in the future they're going to give us more options like out of place sounds, animals, and you know, maybe weather anomalies or something like that. Uh, with Smart Detect, it helps uh, with searching for things in your footage within the dashboard because you can go directly to events and then sort uh, by motion or smart detection. This way you don't have to scrub for days through footage to find what it is you're looking for. You, sometimes you don't even know what you're looking for. This way it's quick, responsive, and easy to use. I really like this. It's helped me help my neighbors out in the past and it's uh, a pretty good feature. Another good thing about uh, the Unify Protect system is notifications. Not only do the smart notifications add value, and save you from being overly notified of motion and smart events happening around where it is you have your cameras installed, Unify gives you a really granular interface and control over how you and your managers that you've added to the system receive those notifications. Whether you want an email or push notification on your mobile device within the app, and the web interface. This way you can determine whether you want to receive a smart notification or a motion notification from which camera or cameras at what time of the day or if you're away from a location. There's also disconnect options and user arrival and departure notifications as well. In this case, I could see this when uh, you know my wife and kids leave the home as long as they take their registered smartphones with them. I will get notified when that happens. I could see this being a really good feature for business owners when they want to keep track of their employees when they arrive on location and when they depart, you know, verification of time cards or something like that. This is a fantastic feature that's just for free. It's uh, it's included in Unify Protect. There's just so much to the system. If I were to talk about each individual item, this video would be 10 hours long easily. I love the dashboard's ease of use. Monitoring events is a cakewalk. Downloading footage and time-lapse is really easy to do and the quality of the footage is phenomenal. And monitoring live feeds uh, when on the same network is near real time. It's a great system and I really, really like it. And if you're looking at this for your home, I'm sure you will like it as well. Now it all hasn't been good. One thing that has been plaguing me as a problematic issue since I've installed this system is that every camera I have, the G3 Flex, the G4 Bullet, the G4 Pro, the G4 Doorbell, all don't know how to handle spider webs in any way, shape or form. And they haven't been able to distinguish them from actual motion. I find myself having to clean off my cameras whenever that issue has arise. Thankfully, all of my cameras are within reach. I can't imagine having put one of these in a place that is difficult to reach and have those negate the ability to discern from what is actual motion and what is just a damn cobweb. Ultimately, Unify Protect is a solid system and it's something that I'm glad that I went with in my specific use case. This type of setup would work well for a small to medium sized business as well. Another good thing is keeping all of my video feeds in house and accessible to me on my own network is of great value. However, it would be really nice if Ubiquity would uh, consider letting users record footage to other hardware or external hard drives for redundancy purposes. Or hell, uh, just give me the ability to dump footage elsewhere without having to download it in the Unify dashboard in the time-lapse um, section. Before I close, I have nothing to disclose. Uh, if you're interested in watching how I set up my own home network, I'll leave a card here. Check that out. That's how I started this whole system and it's just grown from there. If you're interested in pricing availability, I'll leave it linked in the description. Uh, those won't be affiliate links because buying Unify equipment from other vendors, um, you know, sometimes gets a little sketchy and it's more, more expensive 
if you go outside of them and I don't have a, an affiliate uh, link with Unify, so just buy directly from them if I could advise you any way, shape or form, buy from them. Uh, you'll get the best quality and the warranty will uh, last as well. Anyways, that about does it for me in this one. If you like this video, please feel free to give me a thumbs up. If you didn't, you know what to do. Thank you for taking the time to watch. I'm Tomas, I'll catch you in the next one.